Coach J. Morning. Kanda Nahara. How are you, man? Good, good, man. Happy Enjoying to have the you. weather here. Where are you thank at you, now? Thank you. I'm at home. I'm home in Sinaloa, Mexico. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, so we wanted to get you on, obviously, uh, just to see if we can clear some things up. Um, you are still with uh, William Cepeda, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, there seems to be some confusion. Uh, Shakur is saying online that Cepeda wanted the fight pushed back, but we seen you do an interview that went viral where you said you were already negotiating with Shakur's team, you received the call from Turkey, Alashik, and you explained to Alashik that y'all wanted the fight, but you wouldn't be available till November. Now we hear that William is coming back in November. So was it that Shakur didn't want to wait to fight you guys till November, or you guys wanted to tune up before you fight Shakur? Uh, what, what's the true situation? No, we don't want no tune up. We were, we were just William just had his baby. William's baby was just born yesterday, so we knew we knew that that was coming. You know, so that's why we asked for for November. And just like we're fighting in November, it's not about a tune up fight. It's not about nothing. You know, at the end of the day, we just knew didn't know even know why. You know, all of a sudden he was fighting a, a different fighter, which he has. You know, the he can do so. You know, he's the champ. That's what he chose, but yeah, we were we were willing to fight in November. So as far as you're concerned, you were available, but he chose to take this fight with Cordina for a lot of money is being reported. Um, and the fight with you guys is allegedly scheduled for February if everyone gets past their fights. Yeah, that's I mean that's what that's what we heard. That's what that's what was to us but as far as us looking for a tune-up fight as far as us looking for for something in between no that was not the that's not the issue the issue was you know we just asked for it to be november that william took a uh you know something that he's never done was take a break you know to be with his wife with his family uh his son was born yesterday the day before yesterday sorry you know so so i mean that's what we were looking for just to just to have a fight in november now, there's been some potential rumored opponents. I don't know what you can and can't say. I will just say that I would prefer you choose Tevin as he's a southpaw. You guys already have fought three southpaws in a row. It seems like you were getting ready for a Shakur or a possible tank, you know, fight. So why fight George that is a orthodox fighter? Uh, it's, not, it's not George. George George already is moving up to 140 pounds. That was his, that was his response. He's moving up to 140. He was just in the book. Right now, you're looking at probably a 95 percent chance that it be Tevin Farmer. Yeah, I think that's a great fight because again, Tevin may not have the power of Tank, but he's slick. He's still a, a slick black fighter. He's he's very educated in there, and uh, it can give Cepeda the look to prepare him for both Tank and Shakur. Um, is that how you're looking at it, or are you just taking what's available? Look, uh, this was offered to us by by the promoter. This was offered, us, you know, these were the names given to us that I guess that were they're willing to to take to to Saudi, you know. So, so I mean, it was Cambosos. At first, I liked Cambosos just because you know of what, of what he accomplished and you know that he's fought everybody and that his losses, you know, are to to big names, you know. But um. Mm -hmm. Tevin Farmer is, is a is a good fighter. They offered another name out there. Um, I don't know. I didn't really like it. He's not a southpaw. He's he's not. I didn't really like it. So my, myself and my team, we you know we agreed um, on Tevin Farmer. So we're just waiting for confirmation. But that's why I can tell you it's probably a ninety five percent chance that that it's him. We should hear from. We should hear back on Saturday. And it's Thursday today. Now. Obviously, you can't give away game plan and strategy, but why is William the guy to upset Shakur? You know, I mean, it's, it, it's just, you know, William's not going to be bullied. William's not, you know, going to fall into into game plans. William has one plan, and that's just to go to fight. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna come and give you a fight, you know, so... I mean, Shakur's not coming off the best uh, performances off, off his career, something that I don't, 
that I don't focus on because I know that, you know, style makes fights. William is a fighter that's going to come fight Shakur, that's going to come and, you know, sounds, it sounds horrible, you know, but William is willing to take, take a punch, you know, to give six, you know what I'm saying? So, so William, William is just a fighter that is just going to try to outwork you. That's going to try, you know, to, to, to bully you. Um, he's a fighter that touches the body. I, I don't think he's ever, uh, Shakur's ever fought a fighter like William Zapata. And I don't think William Zapata's ever fought a fighter like Shakur Stevenson. So I think uh, this is probably the best fight for both. But I know the mentality of William Zapata, and that's and that's just to win by all means. We got a couple questions here from the people before we let you go. Um... First one is coming from Oscar from California. He says, there are rumors that Morataya was on the table for a fight with Zepeda instead of Farmer or Cambosis. Thanks for coming on the show and keep up the great work with the stable you are building in Sinaloa. Future it. looks bright. That That's true. Absolutely true. I, I, I as a trainer, rejected that offer uh, with Morataya. Um, and I'll tell you why. I rejected that offer. Uh, nothing against, nothing against them. I just think, you know, we've worked so hard to get here. You know, we've paid our dues, you know, to to be here. We've we've worked really, really hard, you know, to become number one in all and all the things, you know. So I want something that's, you know, gonna bring a, a name to us, you know, something something that's gonna that's gonna favor us. Murutaya is a tough fighter. He's a hard fighter, you know. Like I said, there's nothing against him. I just think. As far as for us, we've paid our dues. We've done everything that we've had to do. You know, he's not coming off the best performance off his off his career with Tevin Farmer. So why not give Tevin Farmer the opportunity? I mean, I I, I just prefer Farmer because he's a southpaw. How much does that That's matter you to you? It matters a whole lot. I like his style. I like that he's, uh, like you said, he's a you know, an American, African American fighter who's going to be slick, who's going to, who's going to make us. You know, it's a, it's a similar style. I mean, not, not the, not the exact same style as, as a Tank or a Shakur Stevenson. But like you said, he, you know, he's a fighter that moves. He's a fighter that, that's going to make us work to our next, our next goal, which is, which is Shakur Stevenson. Absolutely. Uh, next one here is from Huang in Houston. Are there any up-and-coming unnoticed fighters you see had potential and would like you to coach if you had your pick? So I guess he meant is any up-and-coming fighters you might have seen that you would like to coach if you were if you were, if you had your pick. I'm just a little different, man. I'm not a type of coach that's looking for fighters to coach. I'm not a fighter, you know that that. Oh, I, I would like to train. You know, I'm I'm blessed, man, that I get called. I'm blessed that that people look for me. But there's a lot there's a lot of talent out there right now. There's a lot of fighters out there, you know that 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 have so much future, that have so much potential. You know, world world champion material fighters. You know, uh, we have some here at our gym. You know, we got we got kids. We got a kid fighting tomorrow, Misael Aldana, who's a tough fighter. Has a very tough fight. You know, because we know that a lot of fights here in Mexico sometimes are tougher than even world title fights, you know, before they even get there. Um, so he has a, a tough fight tomorrow on ESPN Knockout um, as a co-main event. He's a, he's a fighter that's been with me since he started. He's a, he's a great fighter. I mean, we have Celix Castro, who who's unnoticed yet, you know, um, but he's just he's just a great fighter. We got we got a lot we got a lot of fighters out there, but I mean, as far as me looking, oh, I, I would want to train this guy. I want to train that guy. Uh, I don't, I, that's, this, that's just not my style. Next one here is from Years of Lurking from Tampa. What up, Panda? You always down to earth. With that said, I'm here to ask the tough questions as usual. Whatever happened between you and Matias? One loss, people split? That's crazy. No, that has nothing to do with, this was something that, you know, was discussed before even a loss. Or even that, you know, um, uh, Subriel Matias wants to move his camp to Puerto Rico. I'm not willing to go there because I have, you know, I have my camp built here. I have 16 years of camps uh, built here. You know, I got my team here. Um, so that was just something that I had to to look into. And, um, you know, I decided that I didn't, that, that that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do camp in Puerto Rico. But me and Subriel are still great friends. Texas me almost every morning. We just talked this morning, you know. Um, 
So, I mean, there's, there's, it's not about a loss or it's not about a win or it's not about that. It's just, you know, that I, just, he wanted to be close to his family and I'm not willing to, to take my, my, my work to Puerto Rico. Uh, we got James Benitez. He says, has any fighter in your stable ever told you they had a dream to fight in Wembley Stadium in the UK? Or do they dream of fighting in Las Vegas and New York City? No, William Zapata. It's crazy that this person said that. You know, that's weird. Um, I don't believe in that type of stuff. But Williams told me, you know, that he would... that. He, he was would like to fight there and in Saudi Arabia. And it's crazy because probably literally about three weeks after he said about Saudi Arabia is when we got called that we were fighting in Saudi. Nice. Wow. We were having a, a huge debate. At least I'm still right because I said out of every two dozen, you'll probably get one fighter that said he's, you know, his dream is to fight in Wembley. Usually the fighters dream of fighting in the Mecca of boxing, New York City or Las Vegas, the fight capital, right? Um, even UK fighters dream of fighting here in America because of that. But that's interesting that William uh, broke the mold. Uh, we have a pristine sports network from Virginia Beach. Has Shakur fight been offered in the past? Has the Shakur fight been offered in the past? Yeah, but we got to remember he was with top rank. Things There was nothing ever, uh, nothing formal, nothing, you know, just... Just internet talk. And I'm not saying offer. that We never got an offer. You know, at least we did. And I, I can't tell you if Golden Boy got it, but at least as part of his technical team and managers and stuff, we weren't ever offered, you know, or if it was, it was never anything serious. This was a serious offer. I got a call personally from Jay Prince himself, you know, so now this makes it official. This makes something, you know, um, official when Jay Prince calls you and then we get called by Golden Boy that they were getting caught offers. And I said, yes, you know, automatically. And like I called William, I knew he was going to say yes. You know, I called him. I said, we just got called off for Shakur. He told me, tell me where to sign. Mm. Speaking of offers, um, did William ever receive an offer for Tank? Because Tank still hasn't announced an opponent. William's number one in the WBA. No, not for Tank. We've never, we've never been offered anything for Tank. And they never even called you to see because, they, the, you know, obviously Shakur made it public knowledge that Tank's team contacted him and said, would he be available for a fight, but then never called them back. They never even contacted you. No, no, they, they've never they've never called us, um, you know, and I know we offered our offer was to Lomachenko. Lomachenko said he would want to fight till next year. And then we were um, uh, this guy from the WBO, uh, Border Check. Baranche. Yeah, and uh, so he's he has two fights lined up already, so that it was kind of impossible. So it, it kept us, you know, our back to the wall. So our only option there was was Shakur Stevenson. Mm. Um, we have Trees in Toledo, Ohio, that says, "Would you ever train a bare knuckle fighter?" Not something I ever thought about. You know, I mean, I just think, man, that's a brutal, <laughs> it's a brutal sport. You know, and I, I mean, I don't know, do they even box in bare knuckle or do they just go out there and just, you know, just tear each other up? But, I mean, it's something that we can look at. We got, I got a call the other day to tra train uh, some UFC fighter. So, we'll see. Ese Morro from PA. Hey, coach, being from Sinaloa, what did you think of Rayo Venezuela's win against Pitbull? Appreciate you being on the show. First and foremost, you know, I'm, I'm happy. You know, that's that's a, a young man that's from here, even though he wasn't raised here, but he's, you know, he's from here. You know, it brought joy. I was there front row um, watching the fight. Um, I think his humbleness, you know, got him that victory up. You know, he had a great, a great game plan um, that day. And man, just ex excited for a fighter like Rayo, you know, young, young men who are hungry and, and, and to see their dream fulfilled. And um, are you still with Yocasta? Yes, sir. Yocasta will be in camp. She starts on Monday. She's, I mean, she's already started in uh, in Costa Rica. As we know that Yocasta is a huge, huge superstar in uh, in Costa Rica. I mean, it's it's amazing, you know, what, what the Costa Rican people do for her and everything. So she's there. Her sister's on a reality dancing show. So she was getting everything situated. She'll be in camp on Monday. 
in Sinaloa. No, no, I'm going back. I leave back. I leave back to camp on Sunday. I'm here. We had fights here in my hometown uh, last week and then uh, t tomorrow. So I'll be home on Sunday. I'll be back. I mean, camp. I'll be back at camp. I already called it home. I've been there three years. So. Okay, so you're going back to Costa Rica. What part does she stay no, at? It's no. so funny. We're going to, to Jiquipilco, Mexico, where I do the camps in the high altitude. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's so funny. I didn't know how popular she was. Me and my wife went to uh, um, Costa Rica for like part of our honeymoon, and uh, I immediately started asking people. Like as soon as I got in the cab, hey, do you know this girl named Jocasta? You know Hannah Gabriel's? Bro, they really know them. Uh, the, the, the two cab drivers told me that when those girls fight, they shut down the city, and everybody gets to go. It's it's crazy. Because I, 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 I always ask these type of questions. I remember going to Tuscaloosa and asking about Wilder. Like, but the way they reacted for Jocasta, it was pretty amazing, man. They really love her. In the airport, I asked people, and they knew. Like, the workers, they knew her. Everyone knows her. It's like a household name. It's crazy. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, the first time that I ever went to Costa Rica, uh, Jocasta... Jocasta um, was there as a as a commentator before I even trained her before she didn't even fight, you know, just to see how how people and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then you know, second time I went, you know, was with Yocasta. It's it's just it's just crazy. I mean, I put on a Yocasta shirt when I go through the air through customs, and they don't even check me. <laughs> <laughs> they, I gotta try that then. <laughs> no, honestly, they know, and you know, coach, 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 and you know. It, it's crazy. Her last fight, you know, there was a total of 19,000 people, a full out stadium, you know, soccer stadium. That's crazy. You know, that's that that's crazy. Uh, and, and good for women's boxing, you know, good for Yocasta, good for that. But it's it's just amazing. It's 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 mind blowing to see how much love and respect she has in Costa Rica. Yeah, man, it is. It is very, very impressive. Um, let me see. I think that might be everything, Coach. Refreshing here from the people, make sure nothing snuck in. But uh, can you give out your social media for those that uh, don't know how to follow you? Yeah, I just use Instagram, which is Panda Boxing MGMT for Panda Boxing Management. It's what I use the most. You know, my my Facebook is Jay Najar. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Panda Boxing Management. Wait, but Najar is Nahara in Spanish, right? Nahar, without the A at the end. Oh, Nahar. My last uh, name. My last name is Lebanese. I don't know who, what, which one of my grandpas was out there messing around or what, but, or what. No way, which, but wait, is it, is it Mauricio part Lebanese? Yeah, so, but I don't know which, one of my grandmas was out there messing around or one of my grandpas, but, <laughs> but it, it's Lebanese. It means, it means carpenter in Lebanese. The last one just snuck in two minutes ago, DC3 from Houston. Do you think William can adjust to fighting a superior boxer like Shakur Stevenson? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I always, you know, people always ask me, do you think he's ready? I'll never know until the day we're on that ring, you know. Um, but absolutely. I think William is a special breed. I think his discipline, I think, you know, his his hunger. Um, William, you know, has just been, you know, it's forced to fight the way he's fought, you know. But William, if you if you give him an opportunity, he's a slick boxer. William is not a southpaw. He fights at a southpaw stance, you know. Um there's a lot of things that William can do that I think you guys haven't seen yet. You know, things you see in the gym, things, you know. But, I mean, it's just been beneficial for him to fight that way because of the opponents. Well, Coach, that is all the questions, man. Thank you for jumping on the show, uh, and uh, we appreciate you. Look forward to getting you back on. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. All right. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Coach Panda.